What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about another really good list of firearms. Today we're gonna go over the top seven pistols for new shooters. Over the past few months, I've been creating the Best Under series, which Best Under 350, Best Under 500, Best Under 750 for handguns. And if you're interested in those, they're in our back catalog, we've done them this month. During that time, there were so many comments on, is this good for a beginner shooter? And I kept getting so many text messages from my friends who've never owned a firearm before, left or right leaning, mostly left, if you can believe that. And they're asking me advice on what firearm they should use. So today, I thought it would be a good idea to pick some of the best firearms I know for new shooters. There's gonna be a couple of caveats here that aren't with like the best under 300 or the best under 500. So I thought I'd make this an individual list easy for you guys to search, easy for you guys to see. So if you're a new shooter, you're a beginner shooter, or even if you're just an advanced shooter looking for some decent guns, these are gonna be really good in my opinion. Now we tried to pick handguns that are all semi-automatic except for one. I wanted to have one revolver in there for all you revolver guys. <laughs> so I wanted to pick guns that were easy to shoot. I wanted to pick guns that were easy to get a hold of, reliable, and overall relatively good. But I wanted to make sure they were easy to use right away, simple. And I also wanted to make sure they were low recoil and fun to shoot because it's important for them to be fun. So you train on it more and more and more. I, this is something I would hand to somebody who's never shot a handgun before to try to get them interested and try to get them better at defending themselves. That way they can take some self accountability, they can have some self-reliance and feel better about them owning and taking care of their personal safety. That being said, before we get into the video, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. We thank you in every single video because you guys help sponsor the channel. You guys help make this content and we really appreciate it. If you like the Honest content, just go down to the link in the description and sign up for Patreon. And then finally, I want to mention my Twitter, HonestOutlaw underscore. We're doing a lot of cool stuff there. There's a lot of exclusive content, so make sure to go over there and check out my Twitter. Now, at number seven is a gun we've talked about before. This is the Canic TP9 SC Elite. This is lightweight and it's extremely accurate. I wanted something that is small and lightweight that I could use at great distances. And this gun in and of itself is very, very lightweight and very small, 3.6 inch barrel and only 24 ounces. However, because it's a Canic, it has that pre-cock striker trigger in it. And this is the TP9 Elite, so it has the best trigger in it, even though it's about the size of a Glock 26. Comes with two mags, a 12 round and a 15 round mag. So the 12 round mag would be really easy for a new shooter because they could carry it on the very comfortably. It's lightweight, so you can carry it on you comfortably as well, but it's not too small. I didn't want any guns that were too small on this list because when you're starting off shooting a handgun, a handgun is very difficult and you don't want to make it more difficult by trying to use a very small handgun. That's one of the first mistakes everybody makes. They give somebody a really small handgun and they're very difficult to shoot. You have to have a handgun that you can get your full hand on the grip to start out with. That way you can learn to use good recoil mechanics. Also, a trigger is a very difficult thing to defeat in marksmanship. Trigger control is the hardest thing to actually learn on a handgun because you have limited control and uh, limited points of contact on the gun. You generally have a heavier trigger with a lighter gun. With a rifle, you have more points of contact, a lighter trigger, and a heavier gun. You might have a two pound trigger on an AR with a five pound gun, or you might have a five pound trigger on a two pound gun when it comes to a handgun. So it just gets more and more likely that you're gonna twist it to the side one way or the other while you're operating the trigger. The reason why I chose the TP9 Elite is because that pre cock striker trigger as one of the lightest and crispest triggers on the market, and it allows you to make accurate hits with a little bit less trigger discipline than something like a double action revolver. So it allows people to have fun right away and get hits right away, and that kind of gets you addicted, and you wanna get better and better and better. And the more you train, the more successful you will be in a self-defense altercation. Aside from having a good trigger and being the correct size, it's also the correct caliber. Nine millimeter is a very awesome caliber for self-defense when it comes to handguns, and it's super available and this happens to be chambered in it and it happens to have 12 and a 15 round magazine capacity, giving you the capacity you need to deal with pretty much anything. It also comes with a red dot mount if you wanna put a dot on it. I know you don't have to because it has excellent night sights right out of the factory. And it also comes with a lot of grippy, grippy surfaces so you can learn how to operate the gun without having to uh, slip off or cut your hand or anything like that. There's no sharp edges on the gun. Add to that the fact that these can be had for the three to 400 or even $500 price point. They're very, very cheap for what you get. They're a great gun for the money, and they're certainly a good gun to start off with in concealed carry. 
Now at number six, we have the Shield EZ by Smith & Wesson. The M&P Shield EZ is like the Shield, but easier to use. It happens to have a very light recoil spring in it to allow the operation of the slide to be a lot easier. So when you're actually drawing the slide back, like on this Canik here, sometimes it can be a little difficult for arthritic hands because you have to defeat the recoil spring. Whereas the Shield EZ comes in 380 and a nine millimeter. So you can choose which caliber you want, whether you want a lighter or heavier caliber. And then the recoil spring in and of itself and the whole action of the gun is much easier to use and operate. So if you're over 65, 75, and you have weak hands, that's an easy gun for you to get a hold of and use. It has an MSRP of around $500, making it very cheap. It's lightweight, just like the Canik at 23 ounces. It has an eight round capacity and a three and a half inch barrel. Now they have some with double stack capacities as well. I think it's an excellent gun to get into, especially for new shooters because of all the things as I mentioned with the Canik, but it also has a very light recoil spring and it comes from a quality company like Smith that has really good customer service. So if you ever do have anything wrong with it, they'll take care of it. Now, if you want something a little more old school and you've been watching a lot of 80s Stallone movies and you want a revolver, this is my personal favorite concealed carry revolver. This is the Ruger LCR X. Now, I like this gun because even though it's a small revolver, which is very difficult for new shooters to get a hold of, it actually has a single action design. Now, a lot of these are double action only, and I think single action is a good way to teach new shooters to run a revolver because it gives them that very light and crisp trigger pull. A double action revolver is also a good choice for new shooters as a practice aid. So you can go home, you can make sure there's no ammunition in the gun, nowhere anywhere near the gun, and you can aim at a light switch or anywhere that there's a safe area where there's no people in the background or anything like that. Just make sure you're being safe. And you can use that double action trigger to operate the trigger over and over again and you can practice good trigger control and eventually you'll be able to pull the trigger to the rear without misaligning the sights at all and theoretically you hit your intended target and you can use that training and then you can go to the range and you can vet that with actual ammunition but it re it's really easy to get used to trigger control with a double action revolver because it is the most difficult trigger and it also resets itself you don't have to run the slide or anything like that now in a self-defense situation a revolver is great because in close quarters especially with like winter coats and stuff like that a slide can get caught up in clothing whereas a double action revolver will not you can actually stick it right in your pants and shoot right through your pocket if you need to which is pretty cool. Now this one here has a two inch barrel. It has a five round capacity of 357 Magnum. So if you're a new shooter, I would recommend 38 Special. 357 Magnum, Magnum revolvers almost always can use 38 Special for lighter loads so you can practice with low recoil. And that's really nice. Again, if you take one of these, you buy this for your wife, you put the hottest 357 load in it and give it to her, she's not gonna like shooting it and she's not gonna get good at self-defense. Now if you get some PUD loads, some 38 Specials, she might have a good time. She might learn some trigger control and she might learn how to operate and use the gun and she might be an asset to you for in self-defense situations and that can be and that's not just guy girl thing that can be applicable to be anybody you know if you have your if your friend has never shot for the first time and you give him a high caliber gun he's not gonna like it so just make sure that's that you're being good stewards of firearms and make sure that you're teaching people the right way we want people to be happy and healthy using firearms we don't want them scared of them <laughs> well I'll take that now this one's a little bit more expensive than some of the other guns on the list because I was trying to get an ideal revolver. Now not only does it have all the pros that I mentioned before, but it also comes with a longer grip, which is the main reason why I would recommend it. Because a lot of times these snub nose revolvers come with a very short grip, which is very difficult to get a hold of. And as I mentioned before, as a new shooter, you're definitely gonna want a gun that you can get your full hand on. Now, most people don't have hands quite the same size as I do. However, uh, almost everybody's gonna be able to get their hand on this grip. And these hoe grips don't look as good as something like a ivory or a walnut grip, but they do work better. And for a new shooter, this is what you're gonna want. You're gonna wanna be able to hold onto the gun with whether you're sweaty, muddy, bloody, or whatever. They also come with a fiber optic front sight, which is really easy to acquire. As a new shooter, I would suggest getting something with a high definition front sight or a dot, usually a high definition front sight will work great because you're trying to learn to focus on the front sight for the first time and a high definition front with a black dot rear will really help you out with that. A lot of times guns will come with high definition front and rear and that's just stupid to me because you don't really need to see the rear anyway. It should be out of your plane of vision. Now in at number four, we have kind of a controversial pick that I wasn't sure if I should put on this list or not, but I did, so deal with it. It's the Palmetto Rock 5.7. Now there's a few things I really like about this for new shooters and there's a few things I don't. 
don't. And the first thing I like about it is it's freaking cheap. $300 to $500, you can get yourself one of these, which is really impressive. It's 23 plus one. It only weighs 25 ounces, so it has a super high capacity. It's really easy to shoot, awesome trigger, awesome sights, and it's affordable. It even comes with some pretty sweet sights for the cost. However, the cost of ammunition on the 5.7 is very expensive. And that's one thing you have to remember. If you are a new shooter, beginner shooter, and you have a good bit of cash and you want to get into something awesome, 5.7 is a really cool caliber. It's like a little mini rifle caliber. It shoots very flat, very straight, and you usually get more in the magazine than you do a nine millimeter uh, for the same size. So you get more capacity, you get lighter recoil, and you get pretty good terminal effect. However, you do have to pay more per round, which is the big downside of the 5.7. Now the awesome part about the, the Rock 5.7 is it's made by Palmetto State, which definitely doesn't overcharge for their firearms. If you go toe to toe with this and the FN 5.7, this actually beats it for only about three to $500, whereas the FN 5.7 is like $1,200. It beats it in features, it beats it in trigger, and it beats it in reliability. So overall, I would consider it an excellent gun if you're going down the 5.7 rabbit hole. But if you wanna to stick to nine, we got something up next. Now in at number three, the venerable Glock 19. They win. Help! <laughs> Now I mentioned a couple weeks ago that the Glock 19 is overrated, and it is just because people think it's the world's best gun of all time, but it is certainly one of the best guns, and it is a great gun for new shooters. First off, what do you get with the Glock? You get name recognition. People like that. People want a Glock, they want a Smith & Wesson, they want a Ruger, they want something they've heard of before, and you can get that with this. The second thing is the Glock 19 is the highest sold pistol of all time, and that's because of its size to weight to reliability to accuracy to durability ratio. It is extremely reliable, it is relatively accurate, it is very quick, they're affordable, holsters and accessories and ammunition and magazines are available everywhere. You can get a whole system right out of the gun store that day with the Glock 19, and that's pretty awesome, especially for a new shooter. Getting something like a Glock 19 is an absolutely great choice, in my personal opinion. It will work for home defense. It will work for concealed carry. You can take it out to the range and have a pretty good time with it because it is large by comparison to a lot of the guns on the list so far, except for the Palmetto. And it is just small enough to carry, but it is certainly a defensive fighting gun. It's not like a small little micro pistol. It's a four inch barrel. It has about a 24 ounce weight and it comes with 15 round magazines of nine millimeter, but the 17s and the big boys are just a reload away. Now the Glocks come in a whole bunch of different colors with a whole bunch of different sighting configurations and you usually can pay more for cooler features. So most come with dots, the new gen fives. They come with accessory rails and they come with back straps so you can adjust it for your size of hand. Now are there better pistols on the market today? for the money, like maybe the Smith or the CZP-10. Yes, but they don't have the name recognition that a new shooter is looking for, and you might not be able to get that system out of the gun store that day with a holster and magazines and such. So I think the 19, just because of that, gets on this list with no problem. Also, the Glock is super, super simple. All you do is put a magazine in it and rack the slide, and it's ready to go. There are no safeties, there's no bullshit, and that's easy for people to remember. Now, in at number two, the Ruger 380. The Security 380 comes with two mags, 10 plus one. They have a three and a half inch barrel. They only weigh 19 ounces and they are super easy to operate and shoot. come from a reliable company for a very, very cheap price. They have a good magazine size and the 380 is an ideal caliber for people to begin shooting on because it is good enough for self-defense and it is a much lower recoil than the nine millimeter. It's a nine millimeter Kurtz after all, it's just a little nine millimeter and it does still do a very good job. 12 plus one is enough capacity. It comes with that fiber optic front that I talked about with that blacked out rear. It's gonna teach you good sight discipline. The slide is just like the Smith & Wesson and easy where it's super easy to rack. The recoil spring is very, very light. It only has one trigger pull. You don't have to worry about double single action or anything like that. And it does come with a safety, which a lot of new shooters like. Now there's a lot of tactical guys out there that dislike the safety. I understand there's many reasons to not like a safety. You could leave it on in a situation where you really wanted it off and you didn't know it was on and then you get killed because of that. I understand that. But there's a lot of new shooters that won't even carry a gun that don't have a safety and they won't even have that gun on them to have worry about that problem to begin with. So I would prefer if you want to only carry a gun with a safety, then carry a gun with a safety and learn how to use the safety. The 1911 has been doing the thing for 100 years. It has a safety. I've never personally had a problem with it. So your experiences may vary, but if you train with the thing, it's gonna be fine.
That being said, it also has a light rail. It has a super large trigger guard, which is great for gloved hands. And as I said before, it has the perfect size grip to be comfortable to carry, but you can get your full hand on it and you can learn good shooting fundamentals with lower recoil for lower cost. And I like that a lot. Now there aren't gonna be any honorable mentions for this video, but there are tons and tons and tons of guns that would work just as good as any of these. So if you wanna supplement your P10Cs or your shields or your CZ P07s, any of those popular, reputable, reliable guns will work for these occasions as well. These are just the choices that I think would probably be best for new shooters. There's not really a wrong answer though. Whatever fits your hand the best at the gun store, if it's from a reliable brand and if it's a mid-tier company, it's probably gonna work. That being said, number one is a gun I would recommend to everybody. Even if you're buying a nine millimeter pistol, I would also recommend pairing it with a 22. If you're a new shooter, if you're a new handgun shooter in particular, handguns, as I said before, can be very, very difficult to shoot, and a 22 can help you out with that. And it can help you out, A, because there's no recoil on them at all, so you won't build in flinches or recoil responses of any kind that you don't want to. The second thing is they're very economic to shoot. You can buy a thousand round pail of these for pretty cheap, and you can have a blast pun intended. You can learn how to shoot just like I did when I was eight years old. I learned on 22s and most people I've ever met have because they have very low blasts so they're not going to affect you in an indoor range like people get freaked out about the blast. You're not going to be concerned or scared about this firearm in any way and the second you start shooting this thing you're going to figure out that you can run it really really well because you're not overworking the gun. You're not squeezing it so much your trigger control goes off and you're not afraid of the blast going off. So the 22 is nice because it's cheap and it's low recoil and it's low blast. Now this one is the SIG P322 which is an excellent choice because it comes in at a pretty affordable cost about $400. It has a four inch barrel which is good enough for just about anything you want to use it for. It has 17 round magazines out of the box which is awesome because most 22s only come with 10. So you could really use this for self-defense gun if you had to until you upgraded to a nine millimeter pistol and you would certainly not be an arm. Now 22 is not the best thing for self-defense, but it's not the worst thing either. This one comes with that fiber optic front like I talked about. It does have some uh, high def rear, but the front is more noticeable, which I like a lot. It has serrations on the slide that make it easy to operate. It's also super easy to operate the slide, just like the Smith & Wesson EZ. It's gonna be very good for people with arthritic hands, smaller stature people, people with weaker hands. It's gonna be easy to operate for everybody. On top of that, it has a very easy to use trigger, which is very light, and it has a pretty good reset, which will allow you to get good accuracy on target and have a lot of fun. And I mentioned 22s are pretty awesome suppressed because there's absolutely no noise whatsoever, and you can go out with your uh, kid or your wife or uh, your brother or whoever you're trying to teach shooting, and not only are they not gonna experience any noise whatsoever, but they're gonna have an absolute great time shooting a 22. It's like an upgraded BB gun, and it's a fun time. But if you don't agree, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your list. I would really appreciate it if you would go over to Twitter and join Twitter. We're gonna be doing a lot of things on that this year because we have a lot less censorship on that platform than we do on many others, including Instagram. So I'd really appreciate it if you check out Honest Outlaw underscore over on Twitter. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.